Hello guys, welcome to Dr. Science. So today we are going to talk about the metabolic fate of chylomicrons. So please go and watch my uh, previous videos regarding the uh, life to transport and storage in my biochemistry play playlist. So in my biochemistry playlist, go and watch the lipid transport and storage part 1 and part 2 please watch both of these videos in order to understand this video or else you will not understand a single thing here okay so this is the diagram that is taken from your biochemistry textbook and this uh, this diagram is quite complex to understand so I will try to simplify as much as possible but in order to understand this please watch my videos and uh, not only that we are going to first we have to understand what is the structure of a chylomicron so please keep the heading structure of a chylomicron okay now we have to understand what is the function of a chylomicron or what is the definition of a chylomicron suppose this is the gastrointestinal tract and I ate a lot of food which was containing a lot of butter or we can say lipids or fats. Now these lipids or fats are water insoluble hence they need to get transported and this transportation system is called as your chylomicron. In simple words I can say that Chylomicrons are protein shells which are going to transport the lipids or the fats. Okay. Now this chylomicron is going to have a structure. Uh, so this is the chylomicron and this chylomicron is going to have a protein shell outside. Okay. And inside we have mainly two components. One is your majority is going to consist of triacylglycerols and uh, the other lipid is your cholesterol okay so once again chylomicron chylomicron is going to contain two parts one is your outer protein shell and the inner one uh, the inner one is are your lipids which mainly consists of triacylglycerols majority of them and the other one is your cholesterol okay now once again this is the chylomicron isn't it and this chylomicron was consisting of lipids now not only that this chylomicron also consists of a protein apoprotein I already talked about the definition of apoproteins in my previous video and this chylomicron is going to contain a apoprotein called as your B48 okay so a chylomicron will consist of apoprotein B48 and whenever you see B48 apoprotein you can simply say that it is a chylomicron because it is a marker of chylomicron it's like uh, similarly uh, for example you can say that uh, for example you can take like uh, whenever you see plus 91 symbol uh, in your in your phone you can say that this call is coming from india similarly in uk they will use the code plus 44 and you can say that uh, this is a number coming from the UK. Similarly, each and every lipoprotein is going to have a specific apoprotein present on it. And if you see B48 apoprotein present on it, you can simply call that as a chylomicron. Okay. And not only that, it also consists of apoprotein A. Apoprotein a. So, we can say that a chylomicron 
consists of two proteins one is your apo protein i am going to write it short form okay apo protein b48 and the second protein is your apo protein a i hope you are clear with this next we are going to talk about the structure of structure of high density lipoprotein now why the structure of high density lipoprotein is very very important you will understand when i when i uh, draw the metabolic field because high density lipoprotein will act as a repository okay it will act as a repo repository for most of the chylomicrons uh, uh, please trust me i will explain it don't worry but we have to understand the structure of a, a high density lipoprotein so once again this is the high density lipoprotein and the high density lipoprotein will majorly consist of phospholipids inside it and aside from that there are mainly three proteins present on the i will draw with different colors because uh, this this is kind of very important to understand so it is going to consist of three apoproteins one is your apoprotein a the other one is your apoprotein c and the final one is your apoprotein e so hdl will consist of apoprotein a c e remember the mnemonic as it consists of apoprotein a c e and the major majority of the lipids it is going to transport is are your phospho lipids i hope you are clear with this now we are going to understand now we are going to see the metabolic fate of kylo microns so kylo microns majority of them are synthesized in your intestines okay they are synthesized in your intestines please write this one ca carefully they are synthesized in your intestines and finally they are metaboli metabolized metabolized i hope the spelling is clear uh, the the metabolization of chylomicron takes place in the liver i hope you are clear with this now we are going to see how the chylomicrons are formed so this is the intestine these are the intestines and i am going to draw a small cell here this is your intestinal cell okay now i ate a lot of fat or lipid or butter i ate a lot of butter which was containing a lot of a uh, lot of lipids okay so I, so as a, as i already told the synthesis of chylomicrons takes place in the intestines right so first there will be formation of a nascent nascent chylo micron this na nascent chylo micron is a very immature chylo micron why it is immature you will understand in a second so this nascent chylo micron synthesis takes place in the intestinal cell so here uh, the synthesis of the nascent chylo micron will take place i am going to draw the diagram here so the nascent chylo micron so this is the nascent chylo micron which was synthesized in the intestinal cell and inside it the main lipid was your triacylglycerol as i already told you the chylo micron should consist of b48 apoprotein and not only that it consists of apoprotein a okay so so this is the structure of the 
newly synthesized or the nascent chylo micron now this to this nascent chylo micron what does the hdl will do the hdl will eventually add apoprotein the hdl uh, i will draw yeah the hdl the hdl will eventually add apoprotein c and apoprotein e now why the hdl will donate apoprotein c and apoprotein e is very very important because if you don't understand why the hdl is going to donate two of the apoproteins uh, to the newly synthesized chylomicrons uh, is that apoprotein c is required for recognition by an enzyme called as your lipoprotein lipase don't worry i will discuss this one detailedly and not only that apoprotein e is required for destruction or we can say required for destruction of remnant chylomicrons don't worry i will also discuss this uh, discuss this uh, the importance of apoprotein c and apoprotein e uh, first you, you you just trust me okay so once again apoprotein c is required for recognition by an enzyme called as your lipoprotein c and apoprotein e is required for the destruction of the remnant chylomicrons okay so once again i am going to draw the uh, entire pathway here so here was the nascent chylomicron and what was the major lipid it was transporting yes it is triacyl glycerol what are the two apoproteins were uh, that were present on the chylomicron one was your apoprotein a the other was your apoprotein apoprotein b48 now here i am going to draw the structure of hdl 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 uh, was transporting phospholipids and on the on the surface of the hdl we have mainly three apoproteins apoprotein a apoprotein c apoprotein e so to this to this nascent chylomicron the hdl will donate two of its apoproteins what are the two apoproteins that are going uh, that are uh, donated by the hdl apoprotein c and apoprotein e were donated to the nascent chylomicron so we are going to see the newly synthesized chylomicron so this is the newly synthesized chylomicron it was containing apoprotein b48 apoprotein a now what are the uh, two types uh, two apoproteins which were donated one was your apoprotein c the other was your apoprotein e which was uh, donated by the uh, hdl okay so this and uh, trias triacyl glycerol was the mi main lipid which was transported by the chylomicron so this chylomicron is your mature chylomicron okay so here is your hdl and this hdl was having apoprotein a because it lost apoprotein c and e so this is your hdl which donated apoprotein c and e and the main li lipid it was transporting was your phospholipid okay 
now as you can see here this structure here this entire thing this entire thing is your mature chylomicron which which is containing apoprotein apoprotein b48 apoprotein a apoprotein c and apoprotein e now the most important thing here is are your apoprotein c and e as i already told you apoprotein c is necessary for the functioning of lipo lipo protein lipase and apoprotein e is necessary for destruction of remnant chylomicron okay now we, uh, we will try to understand what is happening at the cellular level okay so this we are going to draw the structure of the mature chylomicron so this is the mature chylomicron and the mature chylomicron was transporting triacyl glycerol and on its surface there were apoprotein b48 apoprotein a and two of the main apoproteins which were denoted by hdl were your apoprotein uh, apoprotein c and apoprotein e now first we will talk about the importance of apoprotein c especially apoprotein c type 2 or apoprotein c2 now in the periphery as i already told you uh, this is the periphery or the capillaries or the endothelium of the blood vessels the endothelium of the blood vessels will contain a uh, enzyme this is the enzyme and this enzyme is called as your lipoprotein lipase this lipoprotein lipase is usually connected this lipoprotein lipase is usually connected to to heparin sulfate heparin sulfate now why this is important because whenever you give the injection heparin whenever you give the injection heparin the heparin sulfate uh, is uh, heparin sulfate will cut off the lipoprotein lipase and the lipoprotein uh, lipase circulation will increase in your body uh, i am not going in detail because this will come in pharmacology but i wanted to say this here now uh, as you can see here so this lipoprotein lipase will act on the mature chylomicron this is a mature chylomicron which was transporting your triacylglycerol and it was containing apo b48 and apoprotein a not only that it was con containing apoprotein e as i already told you apoprotein c this is the apoprotein uh, type uh, c2 okay apoprotein c2 now this apoprotein c2 is very very important for the lipoprotein lipase enzyme to work if there is no if there is no apo c2 protein or if there is no if there is no apo c protein or apo c2 protein the lipoprotein lipase will the 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 enzyme lipoprotein lipase enzyme will not work okay hence there will be no extraction of lipids okay now what the lipoprotein lipase uh, enzyme will do i will uh, just clarify for you guys so it will be clear for you uh, for example this is the glycerol molecule what is this this is the glycerol Glyce i will draw with a different color here 
so this is the glycerol molecule and this glycerol contains one two three it contains three fatty acids three fatty acids this center compound is called as your tri acyl glycerol okay so the enzyme lipoprotein lipase lipo protein lipase will act on the triacyl glycerol and separate them into glycerol and free fatty acids okay the lipoprotein lipase the function of lipoprotein lipase enzyme is to break down the break down the triacyl glycerol into glycerol and free fatty acids i hope you are clear with this now if there is no apoprotein c2 if there is no if there is no apoprotein c2 the lipoprotein enzyme lipoprotein lipase enzyme will not recognize the uh, chylomicron hence it metabol it, its metabolization will not take place that's the importance of apo c2 protein or the apo protein c okay i hope you are clear with this now i am going to draw the diagram again here so it will be very clear to you guys so this is the mature chylomicron and what it was transporting it was transporting mainly triacyl glycerol it was having apo b48 protein apo protein a apo protein e uh let's draw with a different color here so it was uh, having a protein e and the most important one was your the most important one was your apo protein c now here is your endothelium and here was your heparin sulfate to this the enzyme lipoprotein lipase was acting so eventually the lipoprotein lipase will act on the let's make it clear so this is the chylomicron which was coming and eventually by apo apoprotein c it will get activated and once the activation takes place between the chylomicron and the lipoprotein lipase uh, the triacyl glycerols these triacyl glycerols this triacyl glycerol will get converted into glycerol and free fatty acids now eventually these free fatty acids will get transported into the these free fatty acids will eventually get transported into the adipose tissue so as you can see here these free fatty acids are getting transported into the adipose tissue okay so that was the function the main function of apoprotein c i hope you are clear with this next we are going to see what will happen after the lipoprotein lipase activity takes place so once again i am going to draw the structure of your a uh, mature chylomicron this is the mature chylomicron and mature chylomicron was having triacyl glycerols present in it it was having apoprotein b48 apoprotein a apoprotein c which was uh, needed for lipoprotein lipase enzyme to work and finally apoprotein e it was the uh, this was the main structure of mature chylomicron and what was happening the enzyme lipoprotein lipase was acting upon the mature chylomicron now whenever the lipoprotein lipase will act on this uh, mature chylomicron 
and uh, the lipo lipoprotein lipase will extra extract the triacylglycerols and not only that remember the apoprotein C and apoprotein E right so apoprotein A and apoprotein C also will get ejected by the lipoprotein lipase so in simple terms I can say that the lipoprotein lipase will remove the apoprotein A and apoprotein C from its surface okay don't worry I will explain it briefly uh, for, a, for a minute you just trust me that lipoprotein lipase will extract the triacylglycerols and not only that the apoprotein A and apoprotein C are also uh, getting removed from the mature chylomicron so what will be the next step is that this is the chylomicron and this chylomicron is called as your remnant chylomicron remnant chylomicron as I already told you it was containing apoprotein B48 and as you can see here the triacylglycerols were completely removed from the uh, mature chylomicron so the lipid content is very low in the remnant my remnant chylomicron usually the lipid content is very low and usually it is uh, mainly cholesterol present in it after the lipoprotein lipase enzyme works only cholesterol a little amounts of cholesterol is present in the remnant chylomicron and i already told you apoprotein C and apoprotein A are going to get removed so what is the only apoprotein that will be present on you on the remnant chylomicron yes it is apoprotein E okay so in simple terms I can say that the remnant chylomicron is going to have only two apoproteins which are the major one the apoprotein B48 and apoprotein E the apoprotein E and the lipid content that is present in the remnant chylomicron are little amounts of cholesterols instead of triacylglycerols which were extracted by lipoprotein lipase there, is, there are little amounts of cholesterol present in this uh, chylomicron remnant okay I hope you are clear with this because uh, once again I am going to don't worry once again I am going to tell this one uh, HDL uh, remember the HDL HDL donated the HDL was having apoprotein apoprotein A apoprotein C and apoprotein E which were donate the apoprotein C and E were donated right and HDL HDL Was, hovi, uh, was having only one prote apoprotein which was your apoprotein A and eventually this apoprotein A and C this apoprotein A and C which was removed by lipoprotein lipase will come back to the HDL so once again the apoprotein C and apoprotein A will get uh, attached to the remnant HDL I hope you are clear with this oh, once again I am going to draw this entire structure uh, before going to the uh, before drawing the entire meta metabolism I want to tell the importance of your apoprotein E why apoprotein E is very very important I already told you apoprotein C is necessary for necessary for lipoprotein lipase enzyme okay and apoprotein E is necessary for the destruction of remnant low density lipoprotein now why the apoprotein E is uh, necessary we need to understand so please write the heading fate of a remnant chylomicron so what is the structure structure of remnant chylomicron a remnant chylomicron 
was having little amounts of cholesterol present in little amount of cholesterol present in it so we have to metabolize metabolize this cholesterol or else the cholesterol levels will get increased in our body right and this metabolism of cholesterol takes place in the liver itself okay so the remnant uh, remnant chylomicron is going to have two types of apoproteins right one is your apoprotein e and is your apoprotein b48 suppose i already told you the destruction of the remnant chylomicron takes place in the liver okay suppose this is a liver and this liver have receptors called as your low density lipoprotein receptor low density lipoprotein receptor now this receptor will recognize only two apoproteins which are called as your apoprotein e and the other one is your apoprotein apoprotein b100 okay now chylomicron doesn't have apoprotein b100 okay uh, usually the vldl will contain the apoprotein uh, b100 don't worry i will talk about it in my ex, uh, next video so uh, chylomicron doesn't have apoprotein b100 but chylomicron does the remnant chylomicron does have apoprotein e so what will happen these ldl receptors i am going to draw it here again this is the liver liver uh, having a receptor this was the receptor called as your low density lipoprotein receptor which can recognize apoprotein b100 and the apoprotein e as i already told you the mature chylomicron which was having little amounts of cholesterol and not only that it was going to have the main apoprotein which is your apoprotein e not only that it have apoprotein b48 also but i am not going to talk about it because the main uh, apoprotein we are going to focus is your apoprotein e so as you can see here this cholesterol need to be get metabolized in the liver so what will happen the apoprotein uh, since the uh, remnant chylomicron have apoprotein e present on it and the ldl receptor can uh, recognize only apoprotein e so eventually the the chylo, the remnant chylomicron will go to the liver and once it reaches the liver the ldl the ldl receptor will recognize the apoprotein e present on the remnant chylomicron and once it, the the recognition will take place there will be metabolization of the cholesterol okay so that is the significance of this apoprotein e if you are clear with this i am going to draw the entire structure uh, entire metabolic pathway once again because this is very very important in biochemistry and you cannot move further uh, if you don't understand this first i am going to talk about the nascent chylomicron which was getting uh, synthesized in the intestinal cells so this is the nascent chylomicron which was containing the main lipid which was your triacylglycerol it was containing apoprotein b48 and apoprotein a so what is this this is a nascent chylomicron to this nascent chylomicron to this na nascent chylomicron high density lipoprotein which was containing apoprotein a c and e a c and e so eventually high density lipoprotein will donate the apoprotein c and e to the nascent chylomicron okay and the hdl will have only apoprotein a so as you can see here uh, the hdl is going to do donate apoprotein c and e to the nascent chylomicron once this is this step is done the chylomicron will get matured so this is the matured chylomicron okay which was which is the main uh, lipid it is having it is a triacylglycerol 
so once again it have b48 apo protein not only that it have apo a protein and the two apo proteins which were donated by hdl were your apo protein c and d eventually the enzyme lipoprotein lipase will act on the matured chylomicron by how this activation takes place by chylomicro uh, uh, by apoprotein c okay lipoprotein lipase will act on the apoprotein c and once it activate uh, the lipoprotein lipase is activated it is going to extract the triacylglycerols and not only that it is going to extract apoprotein uh, apoprotein a and apoprotein c okay the function of lipoprotein lipase is to extract the tri triacylglycerols from the inside of the chylomicron and the apoproteins present on it now there is formation of your remnant chylomicron this remnant chylomicron uh, has little amounts of cholesterol because the triacylglycerols were uh, uh, extracted by the lipoprotein lipase so there are little amount of cholesterol present in it and not only that it have apoprotein b48 and the main apoprotein which is apoprotein e eventually the remnant chylomicron will go to the liver and inside the liver we have the low density lipoprotein receptor so eventually this apoprotein e will go and activate the uh, lipo density uh, uh, low density lipoprotein receptor and once this takes place the metabolization the metabolism of cholesterol takes place from the remnant chylo micro okay that is the importance of apoprotein e so i hope you are clear with this uh, uh, with the metabolism of chylomicron now we are going to see the structure uh, i mean the diagram which is given in your biochemistry textbook i know this was uh, a very long video but unfortunately uh, this is very important to understand so as you can see here we are going to take uh, dietary fats or lipids and once you take the diets or uh, a diet which is having high amounts of fats or lipids there will be formation of the nascent chylomicron which will have apoprotein b48 and apo apoprotein b48 and apoprotein a and the majority of the lipid is your triacylglycerol as you can see here the hdl the high density lipoprotein which was having apoprotein a apoprotein c and apoprotein e will donate apoprotein c and e to the nascent chylomicron and eventually eventually the matured chylomicron is formed which will have apoprotein b48 apoprotein a apoprotein c and apoprotein e and eventually the lipoprotein lipase will act on the matured chylomicron and it will extract the apoprotein A and C and donate it to the uh, high density lipoprotein. Okay. Now the lipoprotein will extract the triglycerols and uh, the fat it will donate it to the adipose tissue as fatty acids. Okay. Now the remnant chylomicron which is rich in cholesterol will have apoprotein B48 and apoprotein E. This apoprotein E is necessary for the LDL receptors as you can see here on the liver we have the LDL receptors and this LDL receptors will recognize this apoprotein E which is present on the chylomicron remnant and its metabolization or the metabolism of this remnant chylomicron will take place in the liver so that was about the metabolism of chylomicron if you uh, please like and subscribe thank you guys